and an uppity day to you. Hello, Yatsi Crowshaw again, and as always, is a big blob of phlegm whose mother mistook for a human being. I was taken home instead of the afterbirth. And we're back to playing Arseholes 2. Hmm. But this is where we left off with our good friend Douglas Uppity. But before we continue, there's a couple of things I want to check out. Mm. Well, first, no man's wharf. <laughs> yeah, that's where we are. Uh, it's a bit of a misnomer. There's quite a few men in it. <laughs> it's just a funny name. <laughs> Why? Roy. Well, because normally it's no man's land. And just to yes. specify it down to, like, the wharf. You could go to the land. The land's fine, really. But just stay away from that wharf. I'm still not seeing where you're extracting the amusement from here. Looks it's oddly specific. Okay. Well, No Man's Land referred to a specific area between two trenches. So I wanted to see what weapons this guy's got. Because some people were suggesting maybe we could check out the mace. Which is a very strengthy focused weapon, as you'll see. Mm. Oh, what's it's, um... It's a, it's a bee on strength. Hey. So I thought we could give that a try for a bit. Yeah. I, just, I don't know, the axe that we found seems kind of, like, beginner -y, You know what I mean? I'm just going to buy one tight knife shot, I don't give a shit. <laughs> well, I mean, isn't that sort of prudent in Dark Souls, is to have the souls invested in sort of things, so you don't yeah, run the risk of losing them? Yeah, it's better to buy items, because items stay with you when you die, and yeah. souls don't. I mean, there was a technique in Dark Souls 1 where you could sort of bank your souls by buying dung pies. Because dung pies could be exchanged with uh, King Seeker Framped for exactly the same amount that you paid for them. Huh. Yeah. I, I must admit, now that I've actually finished Dark Souls 1, um, I've gotten through the game I've beaten. All the bosses, with the exception of, um, I think, a few of the hidden ones, like the dragon in Ulusile, I missed. Oh, um, yes, that guy. I've, and I did it all without, like, fucking summoning or kind of bullshit glitch cheats or shit like that. So now I'm doing, like, a second playthrough with, like, shenanigans. <laughs> and that's... That's proving to be a lot of fun. Shenanigans, eh? Yeah, like, I've got one that's just, like, there's infinite souls cheats you can do. Yeah, um, there's a couple of, uh, techniques. Right, upgraded the mace a bit. That's Sweet. Alright, we got a boomy knocker. Yes. Now switch to it, switch to it. I will. God. It's, it's like taking a small child on a road trip. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so what's its attacks it. like? Whoppa! Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Whooper! Let's see, there's some uh, now for strong. That's got a good. Those are good arcs, I think. Yes, and a little little dance on the heel there. Huh. Woo wee! Yeah, not too I much of a. Um... Does it have a three time combo? I'm not sure it does. Oh no, there it goes. That's just yeah. That's that's pretty good. Like three for with a, enough um, endurance left for a roll. I think it's fairly. Oh. Uh, I think you can roll with like one endurance, can't you? Um, well, yeah, but you don't want to get you, you don't want to hit bottom because then it takes a little while longer to come back. Right. Anyway, so while I'm looking around some places we've been before, why don't you recap the story of Douglas Uppity? I can't remember. Um, <sighs> well, I was hoping you'd at least try. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, I'm going to. Um, so I think last we checked, he was believing his wife was cheating on him. I don't think they were was, married yet. Weren't they? Are you sure? Ooh, oh, look at that. What a chunky beef that is. Fucking take it. Take um, it all, you slut. Well, he's a bath mat salesman who had, uh, you know, some personal crises. Found himself. This isn't Lordran, is it? What's the name of this place? Dranglaich. Dranglaich. Um, oop. Oh. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Hey, I suppose he's not really a teenager. That's. Come on. Don't those barrels explode? Yeah, I'm trying to get them to... There we go. Oh, they explode when you hit that's, that's a, cool. That, yeah, that's a <laughs> fairly reliable thing you can do. But I think, hey, 291 on I think a big it's just, unit. I think it's just because his weapon throws up sparks. Because it's so heavy. Ah. Uh, uh, here's a place we didn't go. Oh, There's yeah, a very specific reason that. why I didn't go there. And oh shit, here it comes now. Should because the first time you come here... The, you remember the pursuer? That happy fellow? Oh, yeah. The first time you come here, he just randomly shows up. And he'll only show up once. That's not a fun I'm, thing. I'm not sure I want to deal with his bullshit Will right he now. not follow you down here? I think I'm just going to... He's not really a pursuer then, is he? He's more of a lurker. Oh, what's he doing? What's he doing? He's doing something I don't want nothing to do with. I think he's just disappeared, actually. Oh, there we go. That's... Well, that sorts that out. I think the pursuer is a little bit of a misnomer there. Yeah. Kind of the, you know, the hoverer. 
Well, we don't know his first name. It oh. could be Half-Hearted. <laughs> kind of a lazy pursuer. Whoa. Uh, uh. This, the moment where it suddenly turns out they have three attacks. Yeah, I hate this bit. It's funny that, um, you know, dealing with um, Gwyn at the end, and he's not that big. You know, he's not big. He's not, you know, massively threatening. I thought you were going to say clever there. He's um, not big. He's not clever. Oh, yeah. If, he, if Lord Gwyn jumped off a bridge, would you jump too? He just has six attacks in a row. <laughs> that just breaks you down. And, and now all these goodies. Yeah. A human effigy, some life gems, a torch. That's what I... That, I figured I forgot one. There's an Estus flask shard up here. Yeah, we... we oh, sorry, I almost those. forgot... Well, oh. I, we just confounded each other there, didn't we? <laughs> Death, I'm, what's that? I'm gonna fight you. I'm gonna fight you too. Oh. Where is he producing those from? Yeah, let's try oh. to back them out on this bitch. Do you think I'm bang. sexy? <laughs> Why am I singing that? I don't know. And that was my victory song. Of course it is. Alright, well that was that. I'm a hollow, you know what I mean. I'm gonna I do my little want, roll, then I backstab. I don't want anybody else. <laughs> when I think about you, I destroy your soul in my hands and drink down your power. Pop. Uh, yes, that's just fast shard. Well, I need those souls to buy a fancy axe. Well, did you finish the Douglas Uppity story? Um, I did a brief recap, and yeah. that's the thing. Well, like, it's, you know, you no, one of us has to die. Well, it was at the point where he was, um, you know, I'd left it on a cliffhanger, so we're waiting for you to die, and then we have to resolve precisely what Douglas was seeing through the steam in the shower. Yes. So we're, yeah, so we're at that point now where we... He was in Stephen Confidence Hotel room yeah. and he saw someone in the shower. Which he, ha I think, you know, was reasonably suspecting was, um... What was her name again? Prudence? Doris Prendergast. Bueller. So that's maybe like 30-40% of the story you paid attention to? Ogmanor. Well, more than I expected, viewers. Anyway... Back to the inexplicably hilarious No Man's Wharf. Well, again, it's it's weirdly specific. Like No Man's Pagoda. <sighs> you know, a wharf isn't just... It could be more than just one bit of wood on a, in the ocean. It could be Ooh, a whole that. bunch of bits of wood in the ocean. It's like the end of fucking Goonies. And a boat over there. This is probably the first place where light starts coming an issue. Oh. Uh. Ugh. Whoa! Hey! <laughs> well, of these jokers. Oh, you're a big boy. You've got a slightly more health than your friends in the Forest of Fallen Giants. Bang! I thought you were dead. <laughs> I'm gonna. You think that would have lit that torch, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'm a little offended it didn't. How did that guy come from behind you? Like, where was he? He was sitting next to a wall, playing dead, like what, like what they do. Uh, okay, okay. So I'm coming back here. Probably didn't need to rest. But never mind. Oh well. And that's what I want to be when I grow up. I'm going to light my torch. Are you wearing Havel's armor? Yeah, <laughs> and he has like a giant anvil hammer. Havel sods. You can get the Katarina armor in this game as well. Yeah. That's good to know. I forget where. Some hidden locale. Oh, there, oh, there he, is. he is. You cheeky sod. Ah. And your dog, yes. <laughs> Let's bring them all in for the party. Well, I killed your dog. Aren't you going to grieve? You heartless so and so. <laughs> Seems a little busy. He is consumed by rage at the moment. Consumed by shadows. Dun dun. You don't want to light that thing, or are you going to kill these guys first? So the fire arrows these guys are firing aren't that much of an issue, but they do become one if you get hit by an oil bomb. Oh, that's interesting. So there's, um, yeah, they're like, sort of status in... change things that you can... They're working in tandem, these guys. Uh, okay. These guys with oil bombs. Does that, that work we... for you, too? Like, can you get oil bombs that are... I think so. But, you know, why don't, why don't you just use, like, a hexinger or a normal firebomb? Oh, I thought it might do more damage. I'm not certain. Now, this is one of the guys that throws oil bombs, I think. Oh, no, he's not. 
Did you see, did you see the, his stun animation there? Yeah. Just like, uh, what can you do? It looked like he'd spilled like coffee on his lap. Like, it's like, yeah. oh, now this. That was a guy who's having a dispute with the director. <laughs> oh god, I'm in pain. Ow. Look at me acting. Ow. <laughs> okay, somebody said fire there, so I'm going to be cautious. Oh, no. Just a Titanite shark. Just a jerk. That's fire, apparently. Um, wasn't there something... Is fire a new word that means good in perhaps... That's ebonic, totally fire, yeah. In perhaps ebonic parlance? Because, you know, that keeps that changes by the month every time white people get their hands on it, doesn't Damn it? Damn you puzzle negroes. I think I remember hearing someone say that something was fire to mean good recently. And to shake your booty means to wiggle one's butt. Does this mean I'm getting old? Does I have to ask these questions? <laughs> yes. I'm only 32. That's that's like mega old now. Bit old to be playing video games all day, but it's, you know, it's older than 31. I wonder what it'll be like when we're 50. Oh, oh you what the uh, fuck? See, it's difficult. <laughs> it's difficult to tell depth when things are this dark. That was great. What the hell? I'm fat rolling. Why am I still wearing this shitty armor? <laughs> Ah, uh, must be the mace. Must have, put, put, must have put me over. Yeah, it's probably heavy. I mean, I don't know, maybe we can check on the armor thing, see if, uh, see if we can get down to, to light again. Because I'm doing a, um, a Cestus run, which is hopefully going to teach me rolls and parries. An Estus run? Well, aren't they all Estus runs? Wasn't it Cestus? Cestus? Is it? How do you pronounce that? Oh, a, Cest oh, a Cestus run. Yeah, that's what I said. Um... So I have two Cestus on and I'm just running yeah, around punching things. Yeah, we're just over 70%. I'm sure we can take that down. Oh, blimey. What the hell are we wearing these for? Big these, these are, knuckles. These, Jesus Christ. These weigh a ton. What are they made of? Depleted uranium? We'll have standard gauntlets and like it. There we there go. We now, we're whippy, now we're a whippy little sod. Let's see if you can run into that fire arrow. Oh, a scimitar. Yeah. That's a good deck sword, I think. I remember getting through most of a game with a curved sword at once. Yeah, don't they get around like shields or something? Oh! Hello there! Oh, I saw you. Hey, where's he going? <laughs> hey, get, get between me and this arrow guy, would you? Nope. No, that didn't work. <laughs> well, I think if, you know, I think if we come across a little further now. God, that archer's. That archer's got good aim. Good on him, you know, not yeah. getting his friend in the back. Blimey. Those dudes look kind of, um, Skyrim-y. Yeah, I see what you're getting at there. I think they're pirates. Uh, okay. Because this is a pirate chippy sort of area. As you can tell by the pirate ships. Mm. You're gonna die, you sneaky little bugger. Yes, you are. I fucking hate the archers. Like, they're just... They're inconsequential until you get one in the head with no health. Yes, remember that. That classic gif-worthy moment from our previous session. <laughs> that was good. I <laughs> just, I st stand still, ask a question, chock. Right oh, through there's the an head. arrow in my skull. Right through the head. Yeah, was, like in was... that fucking novelty way. You yeah. Know? You know what I'm, Get... like, should we light more of these torches? Like, isn't it prudent to have the fire kind of following you along? Oh, no, and... fine. Well, yeah. I, I can't just, you know. In one ear and out the other, that's where that arrow went. It like, really did. Basically, like everything that is said to you. Well, we got a whole bunch of new questions Those after we had ghosts. after we entreated the uh, subreddit of Let's Drown Out for some. <laughs> oh. That's slash Let's Drown Out all one word if you want if you want to pay to visit and maybe ask questions for next time. Had to go around harvesting from a few threads to find all the questions. So you know, fucking sort your guess, fucking sort yourselves out, guys, and don't drink as much as me. <laughs> Have you been drinking? No. Damn. I just sometimes like to affect a comedy slightly drunk voice. Like when I'm doing the judging for the cover videos. Hello, this is Yahtzee Crozier, and today we'll be judging Mortal Kombat. Whatever it is. That was this week's video. Light, damn you, light. I did. Which uh, Mortal Kombat? Uh, Mortal Kombat Kiss. Mwah. Fair enough. Ah, uh, yeah. Interrupt that attack. Yeah, we've got a whole list of new questions now. Keep yeah. them, keep them coming for next time. Keep the pace up. Let's let's try and get through quite a few. Alrighty. Um, if you had to choose one song to be the intro song of Let's Drown Out, what song would you guys use? By Beta Football. 
So it's a fastball. I assume that's like... Uh, football's been around a bloody long time to still be in beta. <laughs> the game's still a bit... They're hoping to kickstart a new rule set soon. Um, oh, they're always you know, tinkering, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they're trying. Uh, FIFA just, crashed recently. Just so. draw a line under the project and move on. Just move, make your next game. That's what I'm going to do once the Consuming Shadow Steam version's out. What the? Oh, hey, it's a dual sword, Johnny. Where did he actually come from? From up above, I Oh, think. so he jumped down on you. Oh! You have yeah. nothing. You have nothing. He's got quick attacks, but I have very heavy ones. <laughs> and this is a zombie huh. who's confused by boxes. And, he seems... Uh, <laughs> if he just turned to his side a little bit, he could probably get through that gap, but... You know. I don't think you'll figure that out. He's taking a few steps back to size up the situation. Hmm, okay. Tactical retreat. Yeah. I'm just going away. Hello! <laughs> Blimey, wow, you Wow, that can take that. a wallop. I suppose that's fair, like... Maybe zombies zombie... got a high resistance or something. Maybe they're much softer. And the very heavy blows just sort of... squat them into a wall and not actually Mush damage them. through them. Let's go. Like poking into meringue. Yeah. Um, what song would you use? It's like hitting custard. Um, Two Little Boys Had Two Little Toys by Rolf Harris. That's actually really good. Two little boys had two little toys. Each had a wooden horse. Then I molested both of them. <laughs> and told them not to tell the papers. <laughs> actually, that's probably disparaging. He, I think he was all the, the little girls. Rolf yeah, Harris. he was a... He was, he's a a good red-blooded heterosexual kitty fiddler, he'll have you know. Yes. It was his daughter's friend or something, wasn't it? Oh, God, let's not get into this. <laughs> this is a depressing enough game as it is. Let's sad out. Uh, yeah, Dark Souls and Dark Souls 2 and, and legendary children's entertainers being pedophiles. They just, they just go together. Yeah, let's hope we don't find a yew tree. In the forest of fallen giants. Mm. So, what song would you use? Um, We're not going to take it anymore, Twisted Sister. No, um, I might be a cunt, but I'm not a fucking cunt by Tism. Are you sure that was Tism? Yes, I'm quite sure. Oh, sorry, I was thinking of Anal Cunt. That was a band that has this habit of coming up with really elongated sort of baity song titles oh yeah what's... And they got one song title called i became a grief counselor so i could tell rape victims they asked for it <laughs> that was the whole title of the song uh yeah a friend of mine was talking about them the other day i can't remember what the name of the band is though. anal cunt i just said oh that was you never the name of a song you fucking because we were talking about song names you never listen <sighs> Anyway. Anal cunt. That was a tense moment. I wonder what their live show is like. Um, probably very smelly. Oh, there's a talking person. Hey, I think it's Luca Teal of Mirror. What is it? She I needs to look in one. And you don't <laughs> things are better that way. Uh. I ain't having that, miss. I'm going to talk to you again. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, people keep a safe distance. Yes, I am an odd one. No, it's not that I'm repulsed by you, I've just got no concept of personal space. Hello! blah de blah de blah de blah But what a strange but You are an odd one indeed. Well, you've made a point of engaging me. Yes, I'm hoping you'll give me something. Yeah, uh, you're, you're an NPC. If I yammer at you, I'll get information or like a little thing. A little treat. Yeah, she, well, the treat she offers is that she's a recurring NPC summon. Yeah. That'll come in handy. I think summons are going to be important. Don't think I've ever gotten past the Iron Golem without her help, listeners. Oh, was the Iron Golem in this as well? No, it's a different Iron Golem. Oh. Well, I don't think it's called the Iron Golem, but it's a Golem and it's Iron. Oh, okay. It's a steel Golem. And there's three human effigies. Robot. Maybe three people just sealed themselves in there for some sexy fun and then <laughs> couldn't get out. <laughs> Why did we build this shelving unit in front of our sex lair? Right, there's a bit... That does seem like a bit of an oversight. Path's branching a bit here. Um, our goal in this part of the game is basically just to explore this whole area. Okay, so, well, uh, where, where do you want to go? Maybe take out that right there. Um, you know, oh. There seems to be some dogs. Okay. Let's go say hi to some dogs. Yeah, you know. That's... Dogs! It's hard to tell in these games where, you know, the... F 
the continuation is and where the little corners were. Whoa! Ooh. Where the hell are you? I can tell you where you are now. In Dead Town, yeah. where they're all dead. Dead Town, population 1,172, now 1,173. The rest of the deadies. It's you. Someone threw dead. something at you. You got oil on you, I think. Yeah. There's I mean, a fire arrow. Don't run into it. Yeah, I just got owl. I just got oiled. Well, I said owled there. That's a different <laughs> you thing. You just got oiled up. Okay, well, maybe I won't. Yeah, let's just go up the stairs. Let's It'll get that, out of the way of the fire seems, arrows for a bit. Seems a bit unpleasant. You had real trouble navigating that ledge for your <laughs> impressive jump attack, didn't you? I'll dive attack him. Oh. Hey, is this the doghouse? Well, they all live. Uh, there's, okay, cool. So this. Oh, uh, yeah, there's a... Maybe light the... Hey, Lucatil found a friend. Good for you, Lucatil. Lucatil, you have loads of friends. What the fuck yeah. are you talking about, you chatty Cathy? Oh, there's the oil jerk. There he is. I'll have to get my crossbow on for him. What do you do? I have two swords. What do you do? I'm a feral zombie dog. What do you do? I throw bath oils at him! Why would you do that? It helps! I just think they'd make friends with the bath mat salesman. Didn't I see you at the bath mat convention? The fateful one? Just trying to peddle your bath oils and realize no one was buying them, so you just started hurling them at people? Yeah, I imagine there's like the bath Where mat salesman. Where are these guys coming from? There's no weird spawn thing or reviver or something like. There's not like a necromancer making them come back or some shit around, is there? Like, um, gonna, if they want some comeback, they can scrape it off their mum's teeth. <laughs> I'm going uh, to light a few more torches to. So who is the better writer, video game director, or who do you prefer? Sweary, Hideo Kojima, or Suda Five One? Who's Sweary? Are you gonna say who asked that question? Um, F House. Hmm. It's next to the G House. <laughs> Which is if you've hit H house, you've gone way too far. Yeah, the G house is where the G unit live. <laughs> They're actually really good neighbors. Yeah. Oh, fucking... 50 cents out mowing the lawn. <laughs> Gotten really into topiary. Yes, but he gets narky if people drop their rubbish in his bin. Yeah. Possessive. Um, so yeah, what's, who's Swerdy first? I then don't know. Sorry. Then LL Cool J drives past and smacks their mailbox with a baseball bat. <laughs> that does seem like something he'd do. I don't know. Yeah, that's just the only collapsed. the only other rap person's name I know. And now that's Yahtzee an, lists black people he's aware of. That's in Snoop Doggy Dog. That's like three names behind, isn't it? Yeah, he's leveled up like four times. He like found a, the Rasta Stone and then became Snoop Lion. Right. That's like that's a thing that actually happened. Hey, guess what crossbows don't do? Arc <laughs> Uh, so yeah, who's Swery for starters? I'm not... Swery is the developer of Deadly Premonition, and uh, before that, Spy Fiction, and more recently, D4 Dark Dreams Don't Die. Okay, I'm not very familiar with those. Okay, well, they're uh, sort of uh, quirky Japanese games, as would befit a list of quirky Japanese developers. Wait, I saw that coming. Where? Have you... I forgot that it's... Uh, I hate when they just leave a little sliver and you have to use a whole other arrow to get rid of them. <laughs> so disheartening. Anyone else want some? Yeah, that guy. Do you want some? Oh, Matrix. Did that hit him? I have no way of knowing. <laughs> okay, I guess the oil dried out. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. No, I, think I, think it's, it. I think you're getting a bit of drop. Run around. Just fucking run around the corner and smack the cunt. I can't. I don't think. Is it? Oh, yeah, it's disconnected. Yeah. Uh, maybe. No, you can't jump up there. No. Uh, oh. I'll just light a torch again. Um, oh, that's right, we've got that healing ring. Uh, let's on, see. Suda uh, 5 1 probably for me. I mean, he's getting a little sort of I think the, stale at the moment. But... I think the difference between them all is that Suda uh, 5 1, like, uh, it's impossible to tell how much work he's done on the games that have his name these days. Because mm. he seems to like use a whole bunch of. Just just puts his name on things that a load of other people developed. And, oh, okay. I forgot I had this out still. <laughs> Run in, twang, oh! I Bonds. have made the error. Don't do it, Anakin, I have the high ground. <laughs> Which is all that matters. Shit! <laughs> um, well, yeah. 
I mean, what ones have Suda, like, what ones do we know Suda has had a lot of control Killers, and... Killer 7 and No More Heroes. That's about the only ones I'm prepared to be, say, def for definite. Yeah, and see, I really enjoy, you know, Killer 7 and the first No More Heroes are pretty good. I'm not even sure No More Heroes 2 he was closely involved with. I, th I think I remember hearing that he wasn't. Mm. Um, I think... No More Heroes 1 did have a lot of problems. Yeah, but, I mean, generally, you know, in, in terms of, um, you know, writing... I think Ko just... Kojima's thing is that... He's a good game designer. He's a good, solid game, good work a day game designer. And he's got enough fondness for the quirky auteur thing. I just think he has absolutely no idea how to write. He Isn't... has. His sense of exposition is awful. He just sort of. He's got no idea just to get the audience to infer something. He just clobbers you around the head with it. Did you know that a fat man is named after an atomic bomb? In other words, the fat man is very much associated with bombs. He's the ultimate bomb man. Did that come across? Boom. That's Hideo Kojima's writing. He That's strikes right me as there. kind of a bit like, um, what's his name, Lucas. Like, really great ideas, but needs somebody else around to kind of... Oh, Lucas stopped giving a shit a long time ago, man. Well, yeah, but... Kojima still gives a shit. I think that's the difference between him and Suda51. I think Swery is... gives a shit, but he's just not as good as Hideo Kojima. He's not as talented at game design. So that's the difference. Of them all, I'd take Kojima. Has Suda been working on anything, like, actually working on anything lately? He's been like, working a on a game that the trailer was released for. Oh, back. I, uh, I forgot my shield wasn't 100% protection. You did. All right, over to you, man. So Douglas Uppity was in the bathroom, and he saw the figure in the shower. The candlestick. Take, going by all his instincts as a bath mat salesman, he carefully grabbed a towel from the rail and laid it on what he knew through his internal calculations to be the most slippery section of floor. And then he quietly slipped out of the bathroom again and cunningly knocked on the door. Then he heard a squeak and a crash and the sound of something hard and fleshy smacking into a basin. For a moment, guilt registered. He pushed the door open inch by inch and saw the form lying there upon the floor. It was a male form, but it was not Stephen Confident. Horror seized Douglas Uppity by the heart when he realised it was Troy, his and Stephen's mutual boss. He Look must have him, swapped please. rooms with Stephen Confident because Stephen Confident was very fussy about having as many chocolate mints as he could consume. Douglas Uppity's hands flew to his mouth as he saw blood swell up in a pool underneath Troy's head. What could he do? He wasn't responding. What could he do? Hmm. And I was not expecting that to collapse. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that happen. Guess you're that crap. So that's the, yes, that's the cliffhanger extended a wee bit. So it was Troy's boss, and what would he do? It was his boss, Troy. He was, who was uh, unresponsive on the floor and bleeding heavily from a head wound. Hmm. That, um, sounds would indicate came from a slip. Well, yes, the slip that Douglas engineered just then. Arrgh. Did you not... I don't even know why I ask anymore. Did you not listen? Well, again, I'm trying not to, you know, die. I, I can listen to you when I'm trying not to die. That's probably why I keep dying. Well, it's... Roll! Thank you. I can't. I've got no stamina because you're crap. That's what Douglas would say. I was hoping that would have more AOE. You know what my other favourite piece of music to go on the intro of this would be? Mm. It would be Working Class Man. Hmm. Working class, working class man. I tell you he's a working class man. You like it, Jimmy Barnes? I like that song. Um... Sweary controls. Yeah, so I, th I think Sweary has the quirky auteur thing. He has he does he does the charm thing that Kojima does, where he's quirky enough that it's charming. But yeah, as I said, he's not as good a game designer, and he um, well, I, I, uh, I think of them all, Suda's the best writer. 
I think he's probably the best in terms of maintaining a consistent tone. Because the other two are really shit at that. <laughs> I mean, there's a bit in Deadly Premonition by Swery uh, where, you know, it's, it's mostly just a quirky, silly game. And then at the end of it, suddenly your quirky female sidekick is uh, hideously raped with alien monsters. Okie dokie. Spoiler alert. How do you not die from that? I can die. Because, dick. because he remembered to wear his helmet today. Uh, He's a good boy. Uh, mm. Hey, I see you standing there. And I see you stand in there. Yes. There's another song we could use. Um, this went nowhere, did it? Yeah, we've been here. Right. You want to be exploring up those stairs, I think. Or that area with all the dogs and the guy who was throwing things from the roof. Right, mind, mind of the pooch. Beware the dog. Doodle. Ooh. You. And now we're down to one Estus flask. <laughs> Lucky we uh, went and got that spare Estus flask shard, isn't it? Mm hmm. Hmm. A lot of blood stains. Oh, figs. I wonder if there's a reason for that. Hey. What is that? I call him the Reachosaurus. Fair enough. Because he's got a lot of reach. Um, okay. Oh. Oh, another one. Ow. Ow. Oh, yeah, they do bleed. They do bleed damage. There's fucking two of them. Yep. They're going to peel the bath mats from your twitching corpse, I'm afraid. Path. Edith P. F. So how's your week been, Gabe? Um, yeah, not so bad. My ankle's recovering a little bit. Can't exactly do squats again yet, but no. I'm getting there. No. I can't wait till you get like an actual injury. I've strained myself climbing. Okay, strains aren't injuries. That's your muscles working, which they're just not used to doing. Touche. I mean, well, like an actual fucking thing where something does, you know, shit that it's really not meant to do. Well, it was your own silly fault getting your ankle twisted anyway. Fall off there, Gabriel. You don't want to be that guy again. You did something dumb, I seem to recall. Um, no, I just stepped off the bouldering bit. Oh, hello. The bouldering bit. Is that your comedy routine? Yeah. Come see me at the Boulder, Colorado Chuckle Hut. So you can do your bouldering bit. Yeah, my bouldering bit. Alright, let's see. Don't have hey, I didn't think you'd make it this far. Oh, what's that about? It's the bell that makes the ship come. Well, when I say come, it's the bell that makes arrive. the ship arrive. Yes, it doesn't make it orgasm <laughs> and spooge cannonballs from its bilges. Boat come. So I suppose I'm just heading back now. Uh, yeah, there's a quite a fair bit of this town we haven't explored yet. Oh, I'll still poke like around. the bit with the oil grenade man on the roof. Yeah, that dick. And that house there. Bloodstain, what can you tell me? Uh, someone <coughs> picked a fight with that door. Alright. Oh, okay, I can just open that. <laughs> yes. I mean, make the big uh, entrance, make the Kool Aid man whoa, entrance. Whoa, whoa, he made the Kool Aid man entrance for you! Oh! Kool Aid man! Way! Fucking god damn it. Even a tanky build took a bit of a hit from that. Retreat, retreat. Come on, come on. This seems to be happening a lot. You're gonna have to face him at some point, man. Fucking dive attack, you fucking chud. Don't wanna. 
And you're dead. Shit. Yeah, it was a tough motherfucker. Hey. I was not expecting, like, the wall collapse bit. I thought, oh, there's a door. I'll bottleneck and oh. Hey, listeners, I directed him to that house for precisely that reason. Anyway, where were we? With Douglas... Oh, fucking camera. Yes. His plan enacted that no possible um, police force could ever detect because they lacked the sheer critical understanding of bath mats and slippage that Douglas had. The rest of the mission Oops, needed to be put into place. Well, he hadn't intended to kill, Troy. I am deciding that he did. Whether he'd intended to kill Stephen Confident, or possibly his unfaithful girlfriend. Well, see, now what he's doing is putting Stephen Confident's trademark comb on the uh, bathroom sink. Dusting it gently with um, a moistened towelette to remove any indication of his fingerprints. Oh, look at me. Uh, oh. uh, <laughs> Douglas. I was about to say <coughs> I was about to say Ninja Warrior there. Douglas quickly sneaks out before any of the custodial staff can see him. Okay. Why are you in here again? I just like to kill things. Yeah, I have that habit too. Like, my housemate was watching me play, <clears throat> and he does a lot of just things where he'll just run past, you know, lots of guys to get to the area that he died at. And that's a really weird thing for me, and I think it's like, you know, because we sort of played games in the day when it was, you killed the things, that was the game. Like, oh, yes. I've got that habit of just fighting everything to get back to that point that I was at. <coughs> What's in that? What, what is actually in that house just, full of the um, vampire things? Just have a big, massive cough. And don't just scatter it around the whole record, okay? Oh, what? Like that time you turned away from the mic and sneezed and bits of it touched me? I didn't sneeze again, is the point. Yeah, but you sneezed on me. Turn away and do a massive... Yeah, I did. That's what that was. Do a massive one. Well, it's it's not like you can just get rid of all of it. It comes back. That's the idea. You know, it's the thing. Well, fun. cough it all up then. That's do the, how it works. Do the thing. Um, I'm sorry I have to explain how your throat works for No, because you. you don't know how throats work if you think that you can just get rid of all of it and then that's... Like, then people would just cough once and be like, oh, that's my cough. That's me, the cough of life. Are you telling me you don't know how to bring up phlegm? No, you can, but it comes back. That's the fucking point. Not if you get bring it all up. You can, yes, it does. It comes back. You can't bring all of the phlegm up ever because it's a product of, like, the well, junk we inhale over the course of the day. Well, it produces more, but you can get rid of all you've currently produced. You just go... Yeah, that's what that was. <coughs> that's how you do it. Yeah. Right. Hmm, this has been that. Sputum Lessons with Yahtzee. He seems kind of a, like, why just one zombie hey. in there? Look who's here. Yeah. Look who's arrived. Now it's a party. Come on, you fucking Dovakin wannabe. Um. Um. My question to Yahtzee. What genre of game would you like to make a game in that is not a genre you have already made a game in? And to Gabriel, what genre would you like to see Yahtzee try to make a game in? By Nixod321. Hmm. We were discussing a brawler once. That's probably, that'd be my answer. I'd say brawler. Cough. Because I can hear it in your voice now. <coughs> See, that's like, that's, that's there what it is. There we go. Earlier. There's my yeah, big boy now. Yeah, but it's just going to come back. That's what it does. Like, it just, you know. You didn't do the, the other things, I'm, the other noises I made. Blow yes. Blow. I've been thinking I'd quite like to make a management-y sort of game. I'm quite attracted to the balancing of figures that way. I mean, after doing... Uh, so a spreadsheet sim. Well, not really. I mean, after doing Consuming Shadow... And a lot of that's just like managing your resources, traveling from town to town, doing stuff. I wonder if you could do a version of that, perhaps geared more for tablets, that's uh, less the action in the dungeons and just entirely making decisions, sending out agents, basically playing as T as he was working in the ministry. Wouldn't that work for if you were also the, you know, the sort of horror from beyond the stars? Like you could be, okay, I need to send, I need to possess several something, people in this location and I need to manage my little golems that run out and oh, this tells place me, needs some goblins. Something, something tells me horrors from beyond the veil of time and space don't use spreadsheets. Oh, you'd be surprised. Excel's very popular in the uh, dimension of unfathomable pain. See, the suggestion you made there I would veto because I 
uh, believe in the atmospheric aspect of storytelling. And I think when you do that, you're going to kind of kill in the mystery of the of the horror. Well, I, you know, I think it'd be more for fun. Like it'd be like a humorous thing. You know, the idea of like a well, inexplicable that... horror still having to manage, you know, things on a very day to day level. Has See, this, kind is, of a, this is why I don't take much of your advice. Kind of a humorous quality to it. Because that would be a conflict of tones with Consuming Shadow as the franchise is established. Oh, so you and want that's... it to be actually part of Consuming Shadow? Yeah, and that's, ah, just, okay. that's just going to confuse the, the uh, fan base, isn't it? I mean, some people get away with it. House of the Dead, for example, has I done think. some really weird. Uh, spin-offs of this franchise but it was, was never House of the Dead really ever well this is I was about to say you know it was never that serious but that was mainly because the voice acting was so fucking atrocious suffer like G did well he didn't talk like that he talked in a massively pitch shifted voice yeah I can't Sounded... do that kind of high pitch suffer like G did <laughs> hey. the look on your face was great <laughs> eyes bugged out a little bit I don't know how you did that it's weird Yes, it was silly. You're going to come over here, mate. No, no. Okay. Fine, I'll deal with you later. Just going to stand there and lob oil. Oh, hey, we missed the party. Can you hit these guys? Yeah. Hit them and break the table. Up, oh, up. Oh, here comes the party. Ah, oh, the party started. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> this is not a fun party. Oh, now it is. You had an opening and you missed it. You won't get that chance again. No. Sorry, Blackbeard. Look at that. There's, there's, there's other dudes on other tables that didn't even get up. Other dudes at other tables who didn't even get up. Okay. What's that from? Slay is a Oh, okay. Empty chairs at empty tables. Whoa! I guess a bandit climbed in here and exploded. Are we a brigand? Could brigandy armor be good? Brigand. Well, it's lighter. By a lot. Mm. I mean, we're still we're light rolling at the moment, aren't we? Yeah. Well, you know. well we can always improve the roll a bit. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. It's an actual stat in this one, isn't it? That's weird to me. Man, he's sleeping deeply. <laughs> Where's my table Just gone? Just doesn't want to get up. I wonder what would happen if I broke this table that he's leaning on. Nah, I'm just gonna stab him up. <laughs> I say stab him up. I just sort of mashed his head into the consistency of uh, applesauce. It's a uh, it's a mace stab. Um, yeah, but I'd like you to do a brawler because we were talking about that once at the bar. Um, I think it'd be hmm. fun. I never really made anything with like a melee engine. Well, that's you know this is why we're having the conversation. What what's a genre you haven't gone anywhere near? And I think uh, a little bit of fun with that because I mean your hit detection and stuff was pretty good in. I mean there's probably like a uh, in what. I'm consuming shadow. Okay. So there's probably a um, you know an engine out there that you could you could pick up Mugen or something. I don't know. Well, that's fighting game. I I, I interpret brawler as something different to a one-on-one -on -one fighter. Oh, it is. But I mean, I, I don't know. Does I can't remember Brugen. Uh, Brugen. 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 Is that uh, that's like, what it should be? There should be a brawler Mugen called Brugen. Is that Mugen for frat boys? Yeah. Brugen. 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 Um, Sounds like a frat boy bogan. There probably is, I'm gonna look that up, there probably is like a, a, a basic brawler engine creator. A Varangian shield? Is that like Viridian City from Pokemon? <laughs> Maybe something with 100% would be nice. Varangian shield, 80%. Is it a parrier? Oh yeah, there it is. Bollocks to that. It's a parry shield. It'd be nice to have a 100 shield at some point. Mm. Yeah, I, I use... I think our... Oop, Can we hit. block oil, or does it, if we get hit with it, we're covered in oil? I think we're covered in oil now, so we okay. better be extra careful of those arrows. I'm kind of curious to see what happens when you cop one. I don't want to cop one, as you so eloquently put it. Receive thine arrow? What are you talking about getting hit by an arrow? I don't think getting hit by an arrow is sort of a thing that necessitates eloquence. Mm -hmm. Flame an arrow. Go, go punch him, because he's going to keep throwing those goddamn yeah, things. Yeah, I you? think I will. Oh, What's hey. with that? This is a Pharos uh, lock stone thing. That's creepy and weird. Yeah, you find items called Pharos lock stones around the game, and then you find these faces. And if you put a Pharos lock stone in these faces, a thing happens. Sometimes it opens up a room with stuff in. Sometimes it opens up a know, something room with else. Monsters. I think we do have a Pharos lock stone yeah. we picked up from somewhere. Yes, there it is. We only got the one there. 
oh what the hell you get quite a few and then I've been, and I've never been sure what this one does so I'm gonna put this put this in and see what happens this will be a laugh nom, 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 nom. Nom, nom. what's going on there something, awesome something I didn't like fucking awesome that was so did that just what just fucking okay there's light so you know that's, oh that's you know nice. what I think we were hit by that fire arrow and we were still soaked in oil yeah that's that puts all the lights on. I didn't know it did this. Ah, oh, that's it's quite a light switch. That's, that's pleasant. That's quite cool. Because you remember those things that kicked your ass? Yeah, they're weak to light. If you, ah. had, a, if you had a lit torch, they would go. Ah, oh. Uh, yeah, because they're like they kind of look like vampire things to me, and they make, they cause bleeds. And so. they and they were hanging around in the dark. When yeah. you met them. I think the trade-off is that we uh, have been spotted by literally everything in the world. Right. Things. I never knew you could light this whole place up. Huh. We're learning so many things. All you had to do was feed Ground Face his special marshmallow. Ground anyway. Face? Is that the Dick Tracy villain? <laughs> mm, ground Face. Oh, actually, this place is still... Oh, no, it isn't. I was going to say this place is still dark. But, uh... Okay. Hey! How do they not respawn? This is Gabriel's fail pile. And the Healthy fail pile. <laughs> oh, look, he's trying to get away from the light. Nice... And his friends are in the way. Ah, oh, you dicks. Good luck with that. <laughs> what a bunch of jerks. Just get out of the way. I'm going to try and push you off here. Do the kick. You missed. Fuck, you moved. <laughs> Down board of you now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Maybe do Come on. One of us is going to backstab the other at some point. Uh, PvP. <laughs> the spin around ballet. Right. Well, shouldn't you go kill those vampire things? Maybe look in there? Uh, maybe I will. Well, I mean, they they are know. a pretty tough fight, though. Well, are they going to come out here? They look kind of... Well, once you take them on, they can get a bit... narky. Oh, one of them actually did move. I think you've, you've, you've got a safe retreat point now, I think, is... Well, yes. Jesus. Miss, miss. Miss, miss, whiff, whiff. Not uh, too nope, familiar nope, with concepts of whiff punishing, these lads. Yeah, this is a pretty slow weapon, the old mace. Shit! I nope. whiffed. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Uh, you're, not, you're not getting me that way, chums. This is where some pyromancy would come in handy. Can you right, maybe that's, knock that's, them with an arrow or that's two? That's one off the checklist. Oh, there's a thought. And I've got fire arrows, don't I? Yeah. Hey, there's another one in there. I didn't realise there were that many. Yeah, there's loads in there, man. Oh. I think... Yeah, fire. there's some fire arrows. Do we have a bow? I think we do. Oh, we do do. Let's see how this works out. Look at them waiting. They expect something to happen. What? <laughs> They're going, let's see where he's going with this, guys. What's that wood thing with the string? Ow! Ow! <laughs> Ow. My bomb! My precious bomb! My face! Uh, fire arrows. I thought that might do more damage, but I don't think it is. So um, I don't want to waste them. Well, I mean, you cleared one out. Let's try the iron arrows. Hoppa! Oh, I meant. Oh. They do do more damage. Almost double. Oh well. It's not like I ever use bows. Twang. Hey uh, guys. I don't want to tell you your job, but you could <laughs> always get out of the way. Uh, cheesing. Uh, well, you can rattle these out pretty quick. Oh wow. That's actually pretty good. Oh, we run out. Um, how do you create artwork for your games, Yahtzee? E.g., what tools do you use? Do you draw any concept artwork beforehand? By what a guy! <laughs> concept art. I no, I, I just kind of draw them straight into Photoshop. Of course, in my earliest games, I used MS Paint. Like you do. <laughs> Let's see how the crossbow does now. Huh. A bit better, actually. Alright, well, now we're learning. Um, so you just sort of freehand it in paint? You don't have a tablet, you just use the mouse? I tended to use the line tool mostly in paint, because you can, like, tell... You can see where it's going to go. Freehand 
If I, whenever I do freehand, I usually have to take a few stabs. Go, okay, blah, 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 whoops, undo. Blah, 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 whoops, <laughs> undo. Well, I find the line tool better because you can sort of plan it out better. Well, that was what I did in paint. In Photoshop, I use the, um, the uh, free draw marquee. Well, the line marquee, where you draw lines to draw around a foot area. Oh, okay. So, oh, I know what I mean. I'm not very familiar with it. I have never really used Photoshop. I tried using it to crop a picture once, and I couldn't. And I just went, okay, that's that's not for me. That's a professional doodad. But, uh, yeah, we were going to give this Grand Lens a look at some point, weren't we? Someone, oh, someone, someone was saying it's worth checking out. All right, yeah, I, I, I like long, pointy, thrusty weapons there. Oh, no, I bet you do, <laughs> ooh, uh, missus. Uh, I'm just, not equipped that? I just... just noticed this mace is really low on... Uh, oh, figs, it is too. On the thing. On the magic substance that keeps it running. <laughs> mace fuel. Need some fresh mace juice. There's another thing in there, I think. Yep. Oh, wow, there really are a fuckload of these things. There is a bullshit amount of those things in uh -huh. there. Now see why you don't want to try the other weapon if, if the mace is about to break. Uh, Doesn't it have like reduced damage if it's starting to get that low? I'll give the pokey I, thing a shot. You know, I the don't range know. I don't, might help you. I don't think you get um, reduced damage until the halberd. I didn't like. It's got the weird giant halberd attack. Well, let's give it a whirl. <laughs> what? What? what, what? Hey, uh, he seemed very allergic to albums. So that's probably. He seemed very frustrated about something for a second there. Yeah, he doesn't like, like albums. I can't believe you'd have the decency to careful the indecency to come at me with such a gauche weapon. <laughs> Is hey. it a spear or an axe? Make up your mind. Hey, guess who else has got reach now, motherfucker? <laughs> yeah. All right. Way, 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 way. Why are they? Hey, hey, you cheats! This isn't fair. You're I not... thought we'd established a rule here. Yeah. You stayed in the house, and I hung back and sort of just poked at you. Yeah. Come closer to this big fire I've got. Yeah, you yeah, better run. They're not big on that. Give the uh, other poker, the lance, a shot. What lance? The lance. Like, the other, the other pokey weapon. Because, you know, you said someone said that the lance was good. So. Oh, we don't have the stats for the grand lance. Oh, don't we? All right. Well, that makes sense then. We need some Dexy Dex. We need some Dexy's Midnight Runners. Guess what song is going to be stuck in my head for the rest of the day? So that we can then come on Eileen. Mm. Do you have she's a into that. Reference for writing in the first person when it comes to your novels and short stories. Do you think you'll write a novel in the third person someday? Well, clearly I do right. have a preference for writing. Gidora. Clearly I do have a preference for writing in first person because all my books so far are in first person. How do you sort of, you know, when you're doing that, do you, are, are you writing sort of as you for them, or do you try to put yourself into, like, a character? Well, it's sort of uh, half of one and six dozen of the other, really. Because when six I write a... Six dozen of the other. When I write a character in first person, their personality is usually exaggerated from components of mine, as tends to be the case with most characters, one writes. I mean, in, in Mogworld, Jim Adam, was... what are you doing? In Mogworld, Jim well, he was, he was doing his hit. In Mogworld, Jim was a very snarky character. He was me if I was able to script my lines. But in the <laughs> main character of Jam, uh, Travis, was a sort of awkward, kind of a twatty character who sort of was sort of weak-willed and went along with other people and didn't really have the gumption to stand up for himself. And that's what I feel is closer to my day-to-day you know, -day self. Gumption. I like that word. It was a bit gumption. Ah, uh, roll! Shit! I was trying. I, did I pick something up from that? I don't know. You know, in retrospect, the blood stain directly in front of that chest would have been a clue. <laughs> well, if hindsight... Click on the blood stain. Like, have a look. I want to see someone open that and die. Hindsight is twenty twenty. I suppose. Yeah. Yep, here, there he goes. Oh boy, a chest. No! Look, look, look. Hey, he was using a mace too. <laughs> uh, um, poor bugger. We just picked up a great sword. There it is. Uh, do we have the strength to wield that thing? Let's find out. We have the raw masculine energy. Great sword, great sword, great sword. Where, where did that end up? So you call me racist, oh, but all the swords kind of look the same to me. Whoa! We need a bit more strength for that. Where is the... 
Oh, there we are. Down below. 28. What's our current strength? Probably not. 22. No, oh, that's actually not too far off. I think a good, a decent boss fight, and we could get quite a long way towards there. I find, like, in in Dark Souls 1, great, I usually kept a greatsword on me because it had, like, great, just knocked down. Like, I usually do the catacombs that way because it would just bulldoze the giant skeletons and other bullshit. Yes. Quite. I've never really done a greatsword run. I've done a lot of, uh, like, whippy swords runs. They're a sort of pull back, use, pull back again kind of weapon. Well, that's pretty much every weapon. Ah! Okay, I need some sw swinging around room. <laughs> Ow. Stab. Stab. See what I mean? It's got that... Oh! Oh. Jemima Piddle Dick. <sighs> um, what is your opinion on giving a voice to Hang previously? on, i got to do my Douglas story. Oh, okay. So, Ugh. Douglas realised... Complain about me having sweaty hands. Douglas walked with shaking legs back towards his room, convinced... <laughs> That with every step, the long arm of the law would fall upon his shoulder. He made his way back towards his hotel room, but then disaster struck. A fire alarm went off. Someone had must have found the body and pulled it to ensure an evacuation of the hotel. Douglas went into a bit of a flap. Somehow he found himself outside. He looked around in a panic, and people were already filing into the fire evacuation procedure. He looked up into the sky and saw again that strange red star that had placed these ruinous thoughts in his head that had sealed his undoing. There was no other option. He ran towards it, into the wilderness, and into the night. Awesome. So now he's bolted off into the nudeness. Yes. I figure we had to, at some point, move this towards adventure. See, I've always tried to open all my books okay, with, there's no horizontal. with a sentence that immediately draws the eye. You're getting... Dog. Yep. Uh, yep, let's knock it. Roll! Uh, well, that didn't take long. Hand me my sweaty device. Yeah, fucking... How'd you scar up your thumbstick like that? By being so great. <laughs> I think you abuse your controllers. That's how callous my thumbs are. Thing. That's how callous my thumbs are, motherfuckers. The oh. the night air filled Douglas's nostrils. The crimson glow of the mysterious star pulsed in time with his own manic heartbeat. We picked up this maze for a reason. Yeah, I, I use it. The halberd didn't like make them not attack me. Oh, we lost <laughs> those. Going. We had ten thousand souls when I died. Now what we got? Two. We got, we got like two. Well done. No, made a mistake. Yeah, see that's that's so much better. Um. Yes. The saying. mysterious pulse of the crimson star throbbed in Douglas's mind. Almost gave him a headache, but he pressed on into the darkness of the forest. Red and black, red and black. The only two things in Douglas's mind were red and black. Well, this is a strange time to consider playing roulette. Madness roulette. Where your brain lands, you'll never know. Yeah, lands on the double zero and everybody, everybody. loses. <laughs> everybody gets a brain! That's when you have to go out and kill someone. Yeah. Shit. 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 Yeah, Mr. Fucking Smartass. Well, I was smart enough to know when to get the hell out of there. I miscalculated on how many of the little spare dudes were here. When they get behind you, that's, you know... One-on-one, on one, everything's relatively simple. <laughs> Form an orderly queue. That was not an orderly queue. As the queue is lacking order. This is the opposite of an orderly queue. Now... Piss bum bugger bastards. <laughs> Did someone turn the difficulty up or something? What's going on? I think it's because that we turned the lights on. So oh, um, yeah, that's right. So everything's fucking full tilt fury. So now we're much easier to see, is my point. 
Oh, uh, well, that explains a little bit. Life gem, life gem. <laughs> oh, bad time for that. What is your opinion on giving a voice to previously unvoiced characters in games? For that example, was... Gordon Freeman or Link. I'm dropped 22. That was your Douglas story, was it? Yeah, he's just, you know, spending the... It's building the sort of you never mythos. make events happen. I have to come up with all the events that happen. Well, you're the writer. You're the one that keeps going on about how that's what you're goddamn good at. You're the this one who is... belittles every fucking thing that I add to it. This so is... guess what? You're the event man now. Well, I'll at least just do take, color. At least take the chance to prove me wrong. No, I can't be bothered. <sighs> you can't be bothered for anything. A few. Um... All right, I'm gonna go. I think a little bit, a little bit more slowness and patience through this. How long had Douglas been running through the darkened forest? How long, with the star fixed in the centre of his vision, glimpsed between the, the leaves that hung over him like the grasping, possessing fingers of justice? Eventually he slowed when he heard a noise in front of him. I do not know when I said that sentence what the noise was. I'm uh. pulling this out of my ass now. He pushed his way through some more bushes and found a friendly looking pub with a light in the window. But Douglas realized that perhaps he had ensured that he could never enjoy human company again. Perhaps he would be forever an outlaw. And if he was an outlaw, he needed a few more resources to his name than just his pajamas and some hotel soap that he stole on his way out. He realised what he was thinking. Hey! hey. Cheeky. Fucking... Douglas Uppity was going to start... Well, continue as he had begun, and he was going to rob that pub for money to aid his flight to Rio de Janeiro, where he could presumably wait out the Statute of Limitations. Once again, no diving attack. I'm gonna have to craft ways that to end my stories that there's... Oh, well. Well, a diving <laughs> attack came out. You have to craft ways to end my and parts I of dived. the story so that you have to have something happen afterwards. Like mid-sentence or something. <laughs> and then he opened the door and... To the pub. The pub was in full swing. Drunks were reveling. Barmaids were singing. A grizzled old weirdo stood behind the bar, pouring pint after pint of putrid country cider. My name is Douglas Uppity, he screamed to a rather indifferent crowd. Why would the weirdo in the pub be screaming that? Um, because Douglas Uppity can now throw his voice. Okay, that's impressive. Um, I came here to rob this pub. And take from you, pointless hillbillies, all of your miserable personal items. Hillbillies in a pub? Yeah. Well, what's actually there, there's a question. What's a British hillbilly? Like, uh, what do you like? You know, the, like if the the northerner farmer sort of, what do they get called? A yokel. A yokel. Uh, was a yokel sort of more an Americanism as well? Like, um, well, not yeah, really more something British specifically British. It was British before it was American. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I thought it was a. American construction. Anyway. Um, so the yokels grabs a pint glass and smashes one into the side of a barmaid. Sounds like a band. The yokels. This probably is, actually. So why did they, why are they smashing them? Well, because he wants their attention and he's going to rob the place. Okay. Why did why are the yokels doing that? I didn't. Douglas is. You said the yokel grabbed a pint glass and smashed it into a barmaid. No, I was talking about the word yokels, and then I went back to the narrative. See, this is why I just don't care now. I'm finished. That's it. He smashed a pint glass into a yokel's head. You don't even pay attention to yourself. It's uncanny. No, because you fucking interrupt every goddamn time. You, all you do is, like, just nitpick. It's like, oh, so the yokel's doing that. It's like, well, no, I'm going back to Douglas That was now. what you said. You said... No, the I didn't. You said... Talking about the word yokels. You said the yokel picked up a pint glass and smashed the barmaid with it. That's what you said. That is the sentence I heard. I'm really certain I went back to Douglas. <sighs> Fine. You see how fun you make this? Yes, I'm having a lot of fun, aren't you? You atrocious turd of a human being. I'm not the one who can fuck up a simple thing like telling a story. Uh, a, you, everything is just like, you know, everything is a problem because I do it. That's just it. Like, well, I'm glad we're know. on the same page at last. 